classic November weather continues in eastern and southern parts of the country, but out west, the heat has returned. Let's take a look at that surface map. This is what some meteorological literature refers to as a prevailing high pattern. Large high covering much of the interior of the U.S., broken up only by this lee side trough in Colorado, and a Alberta clipper diving southeast out of Saskatchewan. And take a look at those dew points. Down there in Georgia, they're down into the teens, 15 degrees, and Atlanta, 11 in southwestern Mississippi. This is some very, very dry air. Here's the plot on pivotal weather as I bring the cursor around. Yeah, lots of readings, even down into the single digits in parts of the southeastern U.S. And some of that dry air as well in the Rockies, down into the single digits. Well, what does that mean? Well, the dew point is a tracer, which means it gives us some indication where the air mass came from. There are two source regions for very dry air. One is up there in the Arctic. The other is in the upper part of the atmosphere. And there's probably a little bit of both going on today. We can take a look at the NOAA high split model and do a quick plot. There's a backwards plot for Atlanta. And indeed, we can see that the source region for that parcel was up there in northwestern Canada and Alaska. So it is definitely a deep winter type weather pattern, although it is heavily modified. In the northeastern U.S., you can see that thermal troughing. If you look at the blue and red dashed lines, that's outlining this troughing, and that shows where the coldest part of that air mass is. And as we mentioned, it's heavily modified, so temperatures are in the 30s and 40s. But a little bit of snow shower activity there in New York. Looking at the water vapor imagery for yesterday morning, a potent little upper low out there near La Crosse, Wisconsin. You're going to see that move east-southeast across the Chicago area. That produced some snow squalls and snow showers. Right around there, you can see that core going right over the city. And then it continues moving southeast, starts opening up into a trough and passing over Ohio and Pennsylvania into the overnight hours and this morning. And we did get some snow showers in Ohio, Pennsylvania, up to 10 inches south of Erie, but Erie itself only got two inches and three inches at Cleveland. A tenth of an inch reported around State College, and earlier this morning, some light dustings of snow in western Massachusetts. But it is clearing on out. You can see that dry air is moving in, and another little upper-level system, not quite as strong, moving across the western Great Lakes. Let's look at the upper air charts and see what that is. So we can check that out on Pivotal Weather, 300 millibars, indicating just kind of this broad, open, long-wave trough. Going down to 500 millibars, about 5 kilometers, not really seeing much. Kind of a weak short wave right through there. 700 millibars, 10,000 feet. Getting a little bit more of a wave through Minnesota. And then at 850 millibars, even a little bit stronger, but still an open wave. At the surface, well, there's where we pick up that Alberta Clipper. A little low right there in southwestern Minnesota, cold front extending out to the west and warm front down to the south. And there's our visible imagery. It does indeed look like that's mostly mid and upper level cloud, just not very much going on at the surface. Still picking up some lake effect snows along the western coast of Michigan and quite a bit more cold core stuff as you go further to the east. Looks like some fairly stout, shallow cumulonimbus across western New York. And there's that Alberta clipper we're referring to. That's going to be just a couple of hours ago. Okay, the southeastern U.S. northerly flow. Still got the surface anticyclone over Arkansas. So until that shifts to the east, it's going to remain cold in the eastern U.S. You can see the thermal troughing to the east of that surface anticyclone, and then on the other side, we get the warm air advection. That's where we have the downslope flow, the southwesterly winds, and strong 
solar heating. So temperatures out there coming up into the 60s. But for today, 50s, very dry, very cold. And we do have freeze warnings tonight for almost all of the southeast, north of Interstate 10, from a line from Wilmington, Albany, Pensacola, Beaumont, and areas northward. So that entire area right there. And that extends into Texas as well, as far west as Waco, Lampasas, and Temple. Temperatures there will be closer to 32 to 35. We are looking for windy conditions there in southern Florida. Today and tomorrow, we will see northeasterly winds up near 30 to 35 miles an hour in the Miami area and a little bit weaker inland. And these are some of the forecast winds from the National Weather Service in Miami. And then for the southern plains, we're clearing on out this anticyclone moving through Arkansas, and we start looking for the ridge axis, and that's going to be right in there. Anywhere east of that ridge axis, we still have the northerly flow, and that's an area where we're going to continue to see cold temperatures. So probably one more cold night, although things definitely moderating out to the west. It was a cold morning this morning. Tulsa was down to 23 degrees. That was a daily record. And in Fayetteville, they got down to 20 degrees, tying the record set in 1993. Some of that cold air still in the plateau regions of Mexico. There's that stationary front right there. You can see temperatures down to 46 down there at the bottom part of the map. So a little bit of that polar air still in place. Some showers in the Bay of Campeche as well. And that's due to that kind of an extended lake effect out over the ocean. So it picks up instability and moisture and then down off the bottom part of the map. By that time, it has grown into large convective elements. Up in the northern plains, as we mentioned, the Alberta Clipper coming south, it was a cold one last night because we were still getting some of that ridge out to the east. Temperatures were down to 20 degrees at Burlington, Iowa, breaking a record for the date. And Quincy, Illinois, out west, down to 21 degrees for a new daily record. In the southwestern U.S., the strong Santa Ana winds we had over the weekend do continue to diminish. We look at Winnemucca and Los Angeles and compare the pressures. We've got 1025 millibars versus 1019. That's going to be about 6 millibars. We really need to be up near 15 millibars to support Santa Ana conditions. So... That is definitely diminishing, but we still have offshore winds, downslope conditions from the coastal mountains, and it is a warm one. Looking for 80s in the Los Angeles Basin, also around San Diego, up to 87 at Anaheim, 86 at Riverside, and 85 at Ontario. And even up north, looking for 73 degrees today at San Francisco. A beautiful start to the day at the National Weather Service in Glasgow in eastern Montana. I always wonder what it's like to have a weather service assignment there. Definitely a remote location. They started the day at 19 degrees with a light northwest wind. Last time I checked, it was up to 28. And here's what it looked like at Cheyenne. But those mountain wave clouds you see right there causing some problems due to increasing upper level flow. Jet stream moving into the northwestern U.S., increasing aviation hazards, mountain wave turbulence along the northern Rockies surface to 16,000, and high-level clear air turbulence out west. And we may see some icing today in the 10s and lower 20s altitudes. And that's due to some of this increasing upper-level flow, this band of 80-knot winds coming around the north side of this ridge and spreading into the northern high plains. This afternoon, though, no real problems. Some air stagnation alerts here and there in the northern valleys as we get an inversion continuing to remain in place underneath this plateau high. But tomorrow, things start to pick up. We've got high wind watches for southeastern Wyoming. Winds could come up to 30 to 40 knots out of the west. Some gusts up near 65 miles an hour around Wheatland, Chugwater, and near Laramie. Winter weather advisory in the Kalispell area for mixed freezing rain and snow, possibly up to one inch of snow. And even up in Canada, around Kamloops, 
Ashcroft and Princeton looking for possibility of freezing rain tonight into tomorrow. And then further west as this Pacific system approaches the coast, you can see that this is a warm air advection regime, warm front to the south, so that's going to mean a lot of stratiform precip, possibly one to two inches in many parts of Oregon and Washington, and along the coast, one and a half to three inches are possible. Could be some urban flooding around Portland and Seattle, and another atmospheric river coming inland for Friday. Gale warnings are posted for the Oregon and Washington coast for tonight into tomorrow. This picture from the National Weather Service at Fairbanks, Alaska, this morning, taken around 9.15 a.m., around morning twilight. Sunrise there is at 9.38 a.m. with sunset at 5.29. By the end of this month, sunset is going to be at 3.02 p.m. as the days get shorter. Various advisories and alerts all through northern Alaska where we still have snow falling. That's it right there, but you can see the temperatures have definitely warmed. Looking at 30s and a few 20s up there on the north slope. Coldest readings are in the interior, teens to upper single digits. But overall, this is definitely a warmer picture than what we've seen over the past few days. And then checking out conditions in Canada, large Hudson Bay low. We've had some air recirculate around the north side of that. Temperatures in the 20s in northern Baffin Island. On the other side, we've pulled down some of that Arctic air into Nunavut. Temperatures in the teens. Blustery northwest winds and snow squalls in Hudson Bay, south into James Bay. But temperatures out here are definitely on the mild side, 20s. And we go south. We can see that is helping to support that Alberta clipper coming south. But even out in Alberta and Saskatchewan, conditions are somewhat moderate. So not really a whole lot of cold air blowing south. Elsewhere around the world, normally we don't cover this because there's so much to cover in North America. But there has been a bit of a heat wave in China. Reportedly, a lot of records have been broken there. You can see that it is November, but we're almost near 90 degrees in some parts of eastern China. And in Korea, 70s, which is very unusual this time of year, and lots of 70s throughout Japan. Temperatures up near 90 degrees in Bangladesh and 80s in India, almost 90 degrees there, southwest of New Delhi. Here we can see the temperature anomaly, although this is for yesterday, but this does show that China has been enduring some very warm temperatures. And then further to the west, some very warm conditions as well in Ukraine, southern Russia, and the eastern part of Europe. And this is how the same map looks for North America, significantly below normal in the central U.S. And up in the Arctic, you can see how it's much warmer than normal. Temperatures should be in the single digits and teens, but instead we've got teens, 20s, and maybe even a few readings near 30. Here's our atmospheric river situation that is definitely important during the cold season. Here we've got one atmospheric river coming into the Portland area. That's going to be moving through tonight into tomorrow and then heading into the inland areas, causing those snow and freezing rain problems. Some areas getting liquid rain. There's surge number two coming in for Friday, and that heads into Oregon, northwest California, and Washington. And then going into the weekend and into early next week, not really a well-defined atmospheric river, just a lot of moisture along the Pacific coast, close to low off of Vancouver Island, and westerlies coming into the U.S. west coast. The next big atmospheric river is later next week. So we're looking at about, it's going to be about next Thursday or Friday. And again, we're looking at the same area as the northwest coast, although this is going to be associated with a digging trough. And with that, it may have more of a southerly reach. We've got that one jet stream coming in for the weekend and early next week. And then the next system for late next week, that is going to be a digging trough. You can see the jet max on the west side of this upper level low, which means it will likely 
dig further to the southeast. And you can see that's certainly going to have an impact on California towards the weekend after this weekend. So we're talking about the 11th and 12th. And looks like a continued active weather pattern. This next trough will likely dig as well. So it looks like some inclement weather for the western U.S. for mid-month. But in the short term, here's where we're at right now. There's that little weak Alberta Clipper coming south. Big outgoing polar high across the eastern U.S. And a vaguely defined plateau high out west. And there's that offshore system. There's that warm front and the cold front offshore. So we're going to see those preset bands spreading inland and then going through the overnight hours. Lots of rain into Portland and Seattle and starting to break out that freezing rain out there around Ashcroft and Kamloops and extending a little bit there into the area north of Kalispell. A lot of that is going to be snow, but there could be some localized freezing rain up there in northwestern Montana. Not much going on out east. Departing polar high, so that's going to gradually sink on off towards the southeast and put much of the central U.S. under this southwesterly flow, and we'll start getting that warm-up going into the weekend. You can see lots of rain spreading into Montana, so this is definitely a warmer pattern than what we've seen. At this point, most of the energy is in the mid-levels, crossing the Rockies, and it will emerge on the other side. This is going to be early Friday. There's that upper level energy coming out into South Dakota, Rapid City, and then moving on off towards the east. Weak system, and here comes round number two spreading into Portland and Seattle. And yes, that is liquid precip. Don't see very much snow or freezing rain, anything like that, except in the higher elevations of the Cascades. And that's the last frame I have that's going to be late on Saturday. That's that very weak Pacific system coming across Iowa. Some clouds and a little bit of rain with that, but overall it is uh, looking pretty good except up there in the northwestern U.S. All right, and that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you got a little something out of that. We'll see you back here again on Friday for another edition. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening, and we will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.